Another type of exponential equation that you might encounter is one that is quadratic in form. So at the top of page six, I'm gonna walk you through the process of solving an exponential equation that is quadratic in form. Now, we know what quadratic means. We've seen the quadratic form in functions that are quadratic, but not exponential. So for example, we know that if you're given a function f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, that's a quadratic function. It's not exponential because x, the variable, is not located in the power. Okay? What makes a function quadratic is basically the highest power essentially of the variable is 2. Okay? So now we're going to talk about you know, what a quadratic exponential function looks like and how to solve that. Okay? So if you were solving something that we're familiar with, like an f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to move all terms to one side of the equation so that one side is zero. Okay, that's going to apply as well if you're dealing with an exponential equation that is quadratic in form. You're going to move everything to one side and make sure that one side is equal to zero. Okay, now it might be a little confusing because the exponential part is going to be involved. So to kind of get around that, I recommend following step two. We're going to make a substitution to temporarily get rid of the exponential term. Okay, so we're going to let u equal e to the x, if that's the exponential term that's involved, or if it's a to the x, some other base other than e, we're going to let u be a to the x. Okay, so then in step three, we're going to use this substitution to rewrite the original equation as an equation in u. Okay, that's going to give you a, an equation that has this format, a number times u squared plus a number times u plus some other number is equal to zero. Okay, so u is going to be either uh, e to the x or it's going to be a to the x. Okay, so working with it, working with your equation in this manner, okay, you kind of forget about the exponential part of it for a minute. Okay, so this is something we're familiar with, the a times u squared plus b times u plus c equals zero. It's like having ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, except we've got this u instead of x, okay? So we're gonna solve this equation. We're gonna solve the a times u squared plus b times u plus c equals zero for u and we solve it like we normally do a quadratic equation. We solve using factoring or the quadratic formula, okay? Um, if you've forgotten the quadratic formula, okay, here it is. You'd be solving for u here. So the solutions to this equation are gonna be u equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two a. Okay, so you can use the quadratic formula, you can use factoring, whichever you choose. Okay, so you're using the factoring or the quadratic formula to solve for you. Okay, so then in step five, we're going to turn the equation back into an exponential. We're going to replace u with what we substituted it for. We're going to replace u with either e to the x or a to the x. Okay, so now we end up with more than what probably more than one uh, exponential equation okay but they're simpler exponential equations and we should be able to solve those guys for x okay because at the end of the day the variable that's presented to you is more than likely going to be x you have to solve the equation for x the final answer cannot be where you solve for u. You have to solve for x, okay? All right, so hopefully it'll make a little more sense as we do example two, okay? So it says solve each equation 
give both the exact value or values for x and a decimal approximation to the nearest thousandth. Okay, so here comes the first equation. Okay, we have e raised to the 2 times x power minus 6 times e to the x plus 5 is equal to 0. Okay, just a quick scan of this. This is clearly an exponential equation. Your variable is x. It is located in the power, in the exponent, okay? You've got two exponential pieces. You have e to the two, you have e raised to the two times x, and then you have the e to the x piece right here, okay? What we've done so far when we've solved exponential equations is we try to isolate the exponential piece, either have the left side of the equation be one exponential piece equal to a number on the other side, or we tried to make our equation such that we had an exponential term on the left equal to a different exponential term on the right, okay? So if you try to move things around here, you can't make that happen, okay? Um, you have a different kind of equation here, okay? So this is really this is really quadratic in form, okay? And you may not see that, okay? I'm gonna show you, let me do a little rewriting here so you can kind of see that this is quadratic, okay? This term, e to the 2x, it is the same thing as e to the x times e to the x, okay? Because if I have a power of e times a power of e, I can combine them into one power of e, and I have to add the exponents, okay? So that's how, you know, this is the same thing as e to the 2x, okay? So if you write it this way, okay, and then we rewrite the rest of this, okay? This first piece that I've been working with we have the quantity e to the x multiplied by itself, so we can write e to the x squared minus 6 times e to the x plus 5 is equal to 0, okay? And then if I make that substitution, u, we're going to let u be the exponential piece, okay? The exponential piece is e to the x, okay? then I can rewrite this equation as u squared minus six times u plus five is equal to zero, okay? And now I'm gonna concentrate on this equation, okay? When I look at u squared minus six times u plus five is equal to zero, I'm really happy because I don't have to think about something exponential. Okay, I'm going to go about my business and solve this equation in U. Okay, so that substitution makes it a lot clearer to see. Okay, so this is quadratic. The highest power of U is 2. To solve this, we need to make sure one side is 0. It already is. Okay, and now we either factor or use the quadratic formula to solve. Okay, this one factors really easily, so I'm going to go ahead and factor it. Okay, one side has to stay zero. Okay, u squared breaks up into u times u, and then we've got to kind of play with our numbers here. We need two numbers that multiply to be positive five and add up to negative six. It looks like it's going to be u minus five and u minus one. You can and should multiply this back out to check yourself. This is going to be u squared minus five u minus u plus five, okay? You combine like terms, you do get what you started with, which is the u squared minus six u plus five, so we are correct, all right? So remember how you solve by factoring, okay? We've already made one side equal to zero. We factored the non-zero side, so now we need to take each factor, which are the things that we're multiplying together, we have two factors here. We have a u minus one and a u minus five. We need to set each one equal to zero and solve, okay? So u minus one equals zero tells us that u has to be one. And then if we add five to both sides over here, we're told that u 
has to be 5. Okay, you are not done. Okay, we are looking for a solution to the original equation. In the original equation, which I just highlighted blue, we have x's. We need to know what x equals, not u. Okay, so what we're going to do is make the replacement. Okay, we know that u is the same thing as e to the x. Okay, so if u is equal to 1, that's the same thing as saying e to the x is equal to 1. And if u can also be 5, that means e to the x can also be 5. Okay, so we need to solve these two equations for x and then we'll be done. Okay, so I'll come up here. So the first thing I need to solve is e to the x is equal to 1. Okay, well, this is a simpler exponential function. x is trapped in the power. So this e to the x piece is isolated. I can go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. Okay, so then remember, we're going to use that third major property of logarithms. Okay, we've got the logarithm of something to a power. The x comes down. We get x times the natural log of e is equal to the natural log of 1. The natural log of e is 1, so we're going to get x times 1 is equal to the natural log of 1. x times 1 is x. x is equal to the natural log of 1. The natural log of 1 is 0. Okay, so here is one of the solutions to our original equation. Okay, if we go back to the original equation up here, okay, x equals zero is a solution. Okay, now there's going to be a second solution. Okay, you get that by solving the other simpler exponential equation. Okay, the one where e to the x can be equal to five. Okay. Again, this is exponential. The x is in the power. We're going to start by taking the natural log of both sides. So we get the natural log of e to the x is equal to the natural log of 5. Okay, same thing. On the left, I can bring the power down. I get x times the natural log of e is equal to the natural log of 5. Okay, and then this is going to be x times 1 is equal to the natural log of 5. And so this means that x is equal to the natural log of 5. Okay, this is the exact answer. Okay, we can go to the calculator to get a decimal approximation. The natural log of 5 is approximately 1.609. Okay, so... In part A, our equation has two solutions, okay? X equals zero is one of the solutions, okay? And the other solution is the natural log of five, which is approximately 1.609. All right, so to recap, let me just summarize what we did to solve this original equation, okay? You had to first recognize that this was an exponential equation in quadratic form, okay? So we let u be e to the x, and then we were able to rewrite the original equation as an equation in the variable u, okay? That brought us to right here where I'm drawing this red star, okay? So we changed, we made this change of variable to kind of temporarily get rid of the exponential terms, okay? So this was a normal quadratic equation. We solved it by factoring, but you could also solve using the quadratic formula. That gave us solutions for u, okay? Two solutions for u. But the final answer needs to be solutions for x. So once we solve for u, we changed the variable back over to x. We made the replacement that u is the same thing as e to the x, okay? That gave us two simpler exponential equations to solve, e to the x equals one and e to the x equals five. We took the natural log of both sides and then went from there to solve for x.